Okay, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is going to be a quick overview of the Tinsel Coil 7 um, construction details. And what you're looking at there is the driver board. This is a standard uh, Mazzilli Royer type um, oscillator driver. And I'm looking for something to use as a pointer. <laughs> I just pulled out a pointer and set it down someplace and lost it. Easy to do around here. Anyhow, uh, I've built a bunch of these circuits and I've found that to, to uh, for them to work the best, your uh, output side, the drain source uh, capacitor over to the inductor output, uh, should be symmetrical and use heavy bus wires and uh, good quality capacitors overrated for voltage. So that's what I've got here. I've got a two IRF P260N MOSFETs uh, in a Royer Mazzilli type zero voltage switching oscillator arrangement. The um, here's the input power connector, plus and minus. The minus is this heavy bus wire that goes through here and connects to the drains of both MOSFETs. That's the negative rail. And then the positive rail goes through these two chokes. These are about 60 microhenry chokes in parallel. Uh, from one of the chokes is the positive wire that goes to the center tap of the, of the uh, flyback primary and nowhere else. The other choke feeds the, um, the base bias resistors, these two big 100 ohm 3 watt resistors. I didn't have two that matched. I prefer carbon, uh, but I didn't have a, another carbon one to use, so I used this metal film. These have to be 3 watt resistors. They do get warm. These go to the gates of the MOSFETs. And then I used a couple of uh, ultra-fast 4007 rectifier diodes for the switching diodes. These go from the drain of one MOSFET to the gate of the other MOSFET uh, with the cathode to the drains, both of them. And that's the whole circuit right there. The gate, the, the, the uh, drains of the MOSFETs come off run along the capacitor stack on both sides and then uh, connect to the flyback primary through these little solder lugs here. And that's the whole of the oscillator. I have uh, six of these one microfarad 275 volt polyfilm capacitors, high quality capacitors, hooked in a series parallel arrangement that gives me a total of about one point, measured total of about 1.45 microfarads. And that's uh, chosen to match the 20 microhenry primary winding of the flyback transformer uh, to make the flyback resonate at around 30 kilohertz, which is uh, about 30 kilohertz for these small flyback transformers I've found gives the highest voltage output. Um, and you have to identify the ground return pin. They're all different. Every flyback I have, I have about six of them, and it seems like they all have different ground return pins. There are various ways to do that. I'm not going to go into how to do that now, but anyway, that's the flyback. And uh, what I do with the flyback transformer is... This one, unfortunately, is blown out. I blew it out yesterday from overheating. But uh, you take and uh, you use as thick a wire as you can manage to get through the gap there between the exposed part of the ferrite and the body of the flyback. And you wind a 10-turn center-tapped primary on there. 
and then bring that out. There's your two end leads and the center tap leads. And then the anode lead and the ground return lead come out over here. And then I immerse the whole thing in mineral oil for safety and uh, cooling purposes. Okay, so the f there's the flyback in the coil there. And this guy just tucks right up in there and screws down. Okay, so the output of the flyback transformer then comes over and feeds the capacitor bank and the spark gap. The capacitor bank that I'm using is uh, one of these. This is, uh, I got a bunch of these at the legendary Mike Quinn's in the San Francisco Bay Area about 15 years ago. Uh, they're out of a Siemens Pulse Power blood treatment machine. <laughs> And uh, what it is, is it's 10 of these um, high quality 30 kilovolt, 400 picofarad doorknob capacitors mounted in this series parallel arrangement. So by jumping this thing, I can get um, one nanofarad, if I go from the end plates to the other end plate, one nanofarad at 60 kilovolts because that puts uh, five pairs in a series parallel arrangement. If I take across just half the stack then I have um, two nanofarads because I've got five 400 picofarads in parallel. And if I take, if I jump these two and then take the center and then the ends that actually puts all 10 of the caps in parallel at 30 kilovolts so that gives me four nanofarads at uh, 30 kilovolts and that's the configuration that I'm using here now I can take out one capacitor and then of course that gives me nine in parallel or 3.6 nanofarads and then I can just take another one of the capacitors and just lay it on the on the rails like that and that actually is enough contact for temporary tuning testing so I can go from uh, 3.6 nanofarads 4 nanofarads and then there's actually room for another one there so I could go to 4.4 nanofarads on the capacitor stack uh, and I have a bunch of these things. I probably have a hundred of these doorknobs. I just went crazy and bought a bunch of these stacks when I was there. Uh, probably have more than a hundred. I can think of it. Okay, now the spark gap. I added another element to the spark gap. This is a kind of a standard Tesla coil spark cap design, only miniaturized. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five five brass tubes and they're mounted so that by swiveling them I can adjust the gap so the gaps can be in ouch sorry about that the gaps can be individually adjusted uh, and the gap on a Tesla coil is very very critical this gap works pretty well uh, but it still needs a lot of work and a lot of tuning I think I'll actually add another element so that I have uh, five sparking gaps in there Okay, so that's the driver, power supply, and spark gap. Now over here, I've made a couple of just improvised high voltage feed throughs. You can see that I got a couple of false starts there and I experimented with stuff. You got to have enough distance so it doesn't arc across and all the rest of that. And then this over here is where the ground terminal goes. So that's where the feed wires from the um, cap bank and the spark gap come up to feed the primary of the coil. Okay. Now the primary itself is nine turns wound on a four inch PVC form and uh, spaced very neatly and all of that. All this, the spacing and the 
layout and all of that contributes to the overall cue of the coil and of course you want that to be as high as possible. Uh, okay now the secondary for the secondary mount I just I glued and screwed a couple of medicine bottles down to the top of the base plate and the secondary itself is uh, about 975 turns of number 27 magnet wire wound on a well insulated polyurethane piece of paper and one thing that I've learned is terminating these coils is very important. Do not puncture through the tube and have anything electrical inside the tube because guess what? That tube is hollow and if your coil is any good it'll spark right down through the center of the tube if you allow it to and you'll never see that spark outside. A liberal coating of Corona dope on both ends and this is actually just some solder wick braid here little magnet to make the connection to the uh, top capacity and uh, a little connector on the bottom so the and also the height of this thing is how the coupling between the coils is set and according to the calculator this should be right there for the optimum coupling of 0 0.122 and hook up the bottom of the coil there. Now this is where the uh, ground clip will go when the coil runs. I used to be able to use tools. So then the primary just fits over there like that, and uh, it's up here. Now the primary here is carrying 15 to 20 kilovolts and a lot of current uh, too, so these connections have to be good and tight. Uh, everything from the flyback transformer on is a standard Tesla coil, although small, standard spark gap Tesla coil. So it's not like a solid state Tesla coil where, you're, where your voltages are not high in the primary. This is definitely a high voltage primary that will eat your lunch if you're not careful with it. Okay. All right, now the top capacity that I'm using is uh, this, this assembly here. A little condiment cup, a couple of cake pans, and a flour vase. Uh, and that goes right up there. <laughs> the magnet auto connects. Uh, okay, so that's all connected up now. All right. Now let's see how she works.
Thank you.